Once again, it's time for that recap thing I do for the world of Glios, where I'm supposed to do it at the beginning of the month, and I end up doing it toward the end of the month because my schedule completely gets away from me. Hey, fun. But hey, it is here, and we have plenty to talk about because there's two months worth of releases to cover. Before we begin, however, a little bit of bragging. I want you guys to meet General Fanost. This comes from a world of Glios I have not covered lately. I've never covered ever, now that I think about it called Custom Core. What is Custom Core? Well, it is a series of figures that Matt Doughty, the father of Glios himself, did out of special run parts only available in certain colors, as well as many parts that took a lot of hand-done work. Uh, hand-casted resin parts and heads, uh, hand-painted, hand-sculpted, and in this case, hand-dyed. All the purple, well, I should say uh, all the purple like this base purple i believe is paint is a uh, actual like plastic but all the darker shades you see the head the torso the shoulders the gun barrels even the torso which is actually super super dark is all dyed by hand which makes these pretty freaking special he hasn't done them in a long long time because i don't think you could at this point Glyos is a little bit too big for this kind of thing now, and it starts some pretty heated debates over whether or not it's proper to uh, modify or dismantle these the same way you would a typical Glyos figure, because this comes a lot closer to being a work of art coming from uh, the Glyos creator himself, and having so many parts that are done by hand. But these things are super rare and super collectible in the Glyos department. Uh, if you wager a guess what that actually cost you... I will say I paid double digits for mine because mine was off to the side and unnoticed in a big parts lot that I got for cheap on eBay. And I could see why I got it for cheap. This came from apparently a customizer who's pretty bad at customizing. There's a ton of parts in here that are uh, paint and ink stained to the point where I can't remove it. Some have been uh, ink bled to the point where there's no way of repairing them. Some of them are painted with such heavy paint they could stop a bullet. Yeah, so this was uh, kind of disappointing. There were enough figures in there to justify the price that were actually complete. A uh, bunch that were like one or two parts off. Speaking of, if anyone out there has like bits from like an original Echo Morph lying around, let me know. I've got like 50% of one I wouldn't mind fixing up. But yeah, I got this for a pretty big steal, and I felt like I was per I felt like I was saving him from like uh. Like the like the uh, the bad kid from Toy Story, whose name escapes me right now, and I'll kick myself for not remembering offhand. Last time I saw one of these on its own on eBay, and it's been a while. Uh, the going price on it, what it sold for, one hundred eighty-five dollars. Yeah, just for this little thing. Of course, that one had the header card, so it was a little bit more complete than this example. But hey, I felt like I rescued a piece of artwork and a very rare Glyos commodity I otherwise would never have had the opportunity to get. So. He stands very proudly as one of the gems of the collection. So that's just the bragging portion, but it's actually time to look at some Glyos you could have actually bought in the last couple months. So, if you weren't paying attention to the world of Glyos for the months of July and August 2016, this is what you missed. Whole bunches of things. I think this is the month, this, this is the recap that kind of proves when I say you have to keep your eye on the world of Glyos because you never know what's going to happen in it because a lot of different things do end up happening. First off, uh, real quick, Mystic Warriors of the Ring came back, which is more wrestling-based figures, and they produced their Goliath figure in the shade of green I ever lo I love so much. It's really getting washed out on camera. So he's an angry-looking dude. I've got him in a little bit of a different configuration than default, but you can see, very gator-based, and he's had that beautiful metallic green I like. I'm still waiting for these guys to come out and fully paint it. That leotard is just like begging for some kind of paint job just to give it a little bit of flair. A little bit of Rick flair, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, it's always cool to see these. And hey, more of this green. More Glyos producers using this green. Please. Uh, on the Matt Dowdy end of things, we also had a bunch of different releases. A bunch of new stuff, too. For starters, the Skeleton came back. The very appropriate color scheme, this is another one of those color schemes I would define as a default, because it does have those darker shades as well as this bone white color that suits the mold so well. 
So it was nice to see Boney back here. This was also the first time that both the Skeleton and the Gly Armor were available at the same time. And I honestly thought when that happened, we'd get some super throwdown between like armored travelers and see who is the superior armored warrior. And it never quite happened. But hey, it's a thing that happened at least. So you had the vault, you had the option. And that was cool. It's cool to see both of them at the same time. They also came with something brand new out of the world of O'Neill design. Behold, the Glide Ninja. Now this is the basic Glion, the little uh, basic soldier style toy, but it's been given a few upgrades. For instance, new head, which clearly does have a very ninja approach to the design. It's very sleeked back, solid red, and you're getting a scarf, so you have more of that ninja feel to it. It's also reversible. There is another head on the back, which is something we'll see the next time I do one of these. But for now, this was a pretty cool release. I think, like, typically, uh, I'm not terribly interested in the Glions, so this was a really good refresher. I'm much more into these as a ninja as opposed to, uh, essentially the G.I. Joe version of a Glyos figure. Uh, they also came with a few extra RoboForce bits, so you can actually create tonfas and swords and all kinds of little weapons for your ninja crew. For example, we also have the orange one that came out. Which, as you can see, also has the Gly Armor attachments, because the, the Gly Armor works on just about every mold. And I've got this big staff weapon com uh, component from all of his weapon gear looking quite good. He's got a little bit more paint going for him, especially up top. He's got the Naruto thing going with the headband. You'll notice the unique sigil for the Gly Ninja as well. Also because people keep saying, oh, you never have builds. Like, I want to see a build something out of one of these. I do have the third Gly Ninja a little bit more built up for your observation. Aha! Behold, a Super Gly Ninja with super articulation. Okay, so what we got going on here. It's the regular red Gly Ninja who looks... He came just like the black one over there. However, we have added... Uh, axis joints of various uh, focus we've added axis joints to the shoulders so he now has a full range which basically equates to universal we also have swing joints which gives him elbows and knees as well as bicep rotation wrist rotation all that fun stuff he's borrowing the armor from robo forces darkness soldier from a previous glios recap and you can see the armor builds up around the leg as well so this gives him a super level of posability for a glios toy which, I will admit, that's always the stickler. Glyos is not very articulate, unless you build them to be. And this guy has a pretty wide range. So, sometimes it's worth building up, creating your own level of articulation, creating your own look for these toys. Which is always the most fun part of Glyos, is making them up however you want. Um, there's a few other releases, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the armor that came out along with these guys. This is in the Uzarian... I believe that's how it's pronounced, colorway. Uh, it's a translucent green. It's not quite the phase green. It's getting washed out on my camera. What was interesting to me is that it came with the met the metallic green paint as its accent, as well as uh, got slightly metallic yellow going on as well, which was strange because it kind of, again, reminded me of the Keytrius colors I loved so much. Just kind of swapping out the dark green for translucent green, which is kind of interesting. It's almost like a stealth or energized Keytrius. So, yeah, this is kind of how you make translucent green a little bit more interesting to me. I typically lose uh, interest in translucent Glyos, but this is going to stick around in my collection for a while, I think. Uh, there was a skeleton release in those colors, too. I figure one example is enough. So, that's kind of still typical Gly uh, Glyo stuff. The Gly Ninja is an awesome update, but what new stuff do we have? Well, for that, we have to go small, my friends. Very, very small, because there is a whole point to the to uh, these toys that have been released. Let's see if I can actually... Yeah, th this one will work. If I can get to the macro lens here. Meet the Bitfig. Bitfigs are little tiny one-component PVC figurines, of course, in this a little bit of ninja design, done up in three-dimensional 8-bit style. If you uh, remember the uh, 30th anniversary Mario Amiibo, think that, except across a whole line of little tiny ninjas. So these are only about an inch tall, very, very tiny, but you can see fully detailed. They've got all these little blocky bits to make sure you've got all the definition. 
and they do come across very nicely as this tiny little ninja guy. Also, Glyo's compatible thanks to a tiny little port on the bottom side, so these can't connect to Glyo's figures. They make for really good, like, tiny pilots for vehicle builds, I find. Also, the fun part, this is Glyo's you can find in the wild, because these are actually designed to be found in the little quarter machines outside of stores, if you can still find stores that have quarter machines. I can find, like one and it's more interested in little sticky hands and little girls cheap jewelry uh, instead of little tiny 8-bit ninjas but that's the new project out of O'Neill design which is kind of a neat little thing i'll give you a kind of a tour of the figures themselves you also have this uh, shuriken ninja which is about the same design switching up weapons but for the most part yeah same thing and you'll notice yeah they do correspond to different releases for uh, the main line. It's a tie-in. And then you got the third ninja here, which has got a bit much bigger helmet, more of a samurai motif with twin swords going on as, as well, which that's kind of why the orange one was the one that was armored up. Hey, it's a theme. You also have the Oni with a pair of sickles, and I know they're not sickles, but I can't recall what the, uh, the actual ninja weapon name for them is. Again, the 8-bit style comes through really well, and he's looking very angry for his tiny little size. He matches up there, and then you have, uh, of course, since we have Boney over there, you have also a Skeleton Ninja. Probably my favorite. This is kind of awesome. I really like him. I kind of want, like, hordes of this one. So, yeah, yeah, of course, they do correspond to the Glyos releases that came around the same time, which is kind of a clever little tie-in. Sometimes... In some cases, the plastic color matches spot on as well. Now, if you couldn't get these like in an actual grocery store or dollar store, or wherever you have these still, don't worry. Uh, Bitfigs does have a website. I'll link them below as well as I link to all the Glyos producers I feature on every Glyos recap. So you can actually take a look for yourself and get a few of your own. They're actually pretty cheap to get them online. Also, online is the... Excuse me there. Online is the uh, only way to get ones like this. This is a trophy version of Faden as a bit fig. This was kind of the origin. The first bit figs design were kind of in this shape. Except those were only available in some weird like 3D printed motif. This is much easier to come by. And that dark gold is done as kind of a trophy color. So you can kind of distinguish it as a very early... Uh, promotional type release so you can kind of like celebrate the fact that you were in on it early but if these are a little bit too tiny for you um, there's always the mega gigantic uh, bit fig faden same gold color came with a set with that little guy and very very cool now you can really see those blocky patterns and all those 8-bit shapes which is quite cool and this one actually articulates a little bit the arms move up and down and those are glios compatible arms too so this one seems like it's going to stick around. I think a blue one is on the way. So you can actually have one that is in the proper fade and color. So that's uh, that was a very interesting release. Very different. This is why I tell you, keep your eye on Glyos, because you never know what it's going to do. Speaking of, those weren't the only bit figs, because that the ninjas were Series 1. Series 2 uh, focuses for a much wider demographic. If the girls aren't interested in ninjas, uh, maybe... Uh, the little 8-bit bunny, maybe? So you also have Series 2, which is all animal motifs. So you have that. You have tiny little 8-bit ducky. I've got a friend of mine on Twitter from Metrocon who would probably go nuts over something like that. We also have uh, the kitten, because, of course, it is... You know, of course, you have to have a kitten if you're going to do anything animal-based these days. You also have a puppy. Cute little doggy. So you got a little tiny waggy tail there in the back. And then to round it off, little tiny piggy. Again, the 8-bit, very, very obvious here. Now, the ninjas all come in those five colors you see, as in all five ninjas come in all five colors. And there are also painted varieties as well you can get very, very rarely. Uh, as far as I know, for now, the animals all kind of come in uh, their own colors that you see here without really swapping around or anything. And also, just to be clear, yeah, um, they also got in on uh, the cross promotion with a little bit of Krayboth action matching the color schemes. Like I said, there was a, there was a lot going on. A uh, couple, you know, one quiet month and one very interesting month. 
So that's what the bit figs are. So that was another interesting change to the world of Glyos. We also had a return of Kabuto Mushi, who was back with another Super DX release. Kabuto Mushi actually had quite a few releases this month, but there was only one that I could really swing at the time, and only one I was truly interested in. Behold! <laughs> this Mushi, based on Masters of the Universe web store, a toy I had as a kid and really liked as a kid, now seen here as the big bad bug that is the Kabuto Mushi. You can see intricately painted in order to match his original detailing. And the special part about this is he comes with a ton of extra parts thanks to some Spy Monkey close combat sets. This is how we get his uh, bug-legged look here. Get the spider legs going across. But he also comes with hooks and hammers. And do I have them ready? Uh, I probably don't. Oh, yeah. I actually do have some of the parts ready up. Because the thing was, there's so many parts to these weapon sets that you can make other weapons for him, because He-Man figures always had axes. Uh, Web Store himself was always known with a grappling hook, so I made a grappling hook for him. The gun is from an older uh, Colgrim, so that's an extra bit I added on, just so he had like a gun that matched his original design. But I wanted him to have a grappling hook, and lo and behold, plenty of parts to make that happen. So you can make a really well-armed figure out of all those extra bits and make all kinds of things. I've seen some incredibly cool builds out of this figure because of uh, all the extra parts it comes with. Swords and hammers and axe blades and all so all manner of things. So this like these get these Super DX releases get like super expensive. But man, there is so much they can do. You get so many parts to do so much. You know, some, the cost kind of balances out just for the sheer creativity it creates. It was also a special release for Kabuto Mushi because for the first time ever, we got fiction. We got fiction for Kabuto Mushi, which was awesome. You'll know, you'll remember like in Glyos 101s, one of my favorite things is when Glyos figures had a narrative of their own. And Onel's is really super vague and it's kind of hard to tell like what characters are good and evil and what happened when and like orders of events and what characters turned into what other characters. So I was really excited when Kabuto Mushi decided we're going to have a little bit of fiction too. And this is actually drawn by MJ, which is Marty, the creator of the Kabuto Mushi. It's his son. So I loved, I, you know, my dad always got me interested into arts. It's probably why I'm a video producer and an artist now. So I think I really I like it's kind of a thing I kind of uh, connect to is that passing down that creativity from, you know, from father to son, which is really cool. So he did all the drawing for this and does a pretty good job of actually fitting in all these characters. You got, you know, you see he's mixed in a bunch of different Glyos characters. You got a Faden, Sarvos, Noboto, uh, the Bio Jumpers, which is an earlier Marty figure. A whole bunch going on here. And the artwork, all really good. I mean, you can tell, you know, first time drawing a comic book, but all the details are really nice on these, and he does a good job of, uh, he, do, he does a really good job of uh, getting the characters right. Um, there is some stuff that, you know, I could critique. I'm not going to be too harsh on him, but, you know, it's stuff that comes with experience. You know, there's a few events in the story that happens a little bit uh, with, you know, without a proper lead-in or anything or a transition. And you've got panels that kind of go in weird directions. They're not quite sequential. Uh, that's stuff that just comes with experience. You know, so it's a first-time effort. This is really, really cool. I will say, MJ... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, MJ. Um, man, I was kind of... Uh, I was kind of hoping for a, a little bit more of like a, a universe-building thing. This is actually kind of a morose story for the first time we hear... Uh, we actually hear from the world of Kabuto Mushi, you know, so, I don't know, may, you know next time I'm kind of hoping for something that, you know, kind of sets the universe and, you know, paints a little bit more of a heroic story. But for the first time outing, this was really, really cool. Keep this up, man. I want to see more of this, and I really want to see uh, where you go with, uh, with not only the story, but also... Just what can happen in this particular universe that uh, you and your dad created. Very cool. Also on the back, a teaser for the Biomasters, which I am super looking forward to. So 
that was something else that came up. Now, lastly, we've got one more Glyos line to look at, and it's an entirely vinyl Glyos line. It is the return of Galaxor. Now, the last time I told you about these, it was when the very first, uh, when the very first uh, production version came out, and it seemed like a very blank figure with very little going on, and I told you it was going to be a really cool canvas to create some really cool toys out of. And I don't think I was disappointed here. Far from it. So let me show you the first one. Now, you'll excuse me. I have, I'm not familiar with the names yet. So I can't tell you what the name of the particular one, character is. But yeah, we got fully painted up details now. I don't know what the Matrix of Leadership thing on his chest is about. But I definitely dig the black and the red with the yellow highlights. This is a really cool. It kind of hits the Proto Man vibe for me. Which is... Always a cool thing, and I like the V-shaped visor. That's a cool touch. So we had him. We also had this one, black and green. I love the look of this one. This very much hits uh, the Hades color scheme that uh, Glyos uses quite often because it is an extremely cool look. You see, it's the same paint pattern, but I do like this matte and gloss black mix. It does create an interesting... Uh, appearance for the toy so we had that going on and then my favorite because of course it's in Mega Man Blue <laughs> two-tone Mega Man Blue shades a little bit of hits of yellow here and this is using the uh, the alternate horned head which I kind of prefer but again I talk blank slates the spare head for him do I have it here yes I do hang on a second the spare head for the blue one is actually fully painted light blue with a Cyclops style visor going on, which is very different contrast to the other two. So while the dome head might be a little bit boring to some, again, it's a blank slate thing. He can do whatever he wants out of it. So you can create very different looks to the same toy. Whereas this head, while I do prefer it, you are kind of stuck with the mouth plate and horn thing. So it's nice to have that round head as an option, just so uh, you can cast different characters and create different looks. But yeah, like I really shouldn't have gone in for all three of them, I will admit, because that gets pricey. But do three of my favorite color schemes for Glass Toys all at the same time. You're gonna get me! You're gonna get me, and you got me. Oh, you got me. So yeah, I am not disappointed. I think these are turning out really, really good, and I can't wait to see what else happens on the Galaxor front. So that, everybody, is the World of Glyos for the last couple months. Coming up soon, uh, we got the Return of Glow in the Dark. Hopefully some Biomasters are coming out soon. Um, God, what else is coming out? More bit figs. I've seen more... More of a lot. There's always stuff coming out for Glyos. And always something new right around the corner. So keep an eye out. Check out the links below if you want to see, uh, get some of your own. A bunch of this is still available, and some of it isn't, but that's what collector forums and Facebook groups are for. So go check those out before going to any scalpers on eBay. Please, for the love of God, don't pay scalpers on eBay. Uh, get them from collectors, get them from the source, support the people who are actually uh, in the fandom rather than people trying to take advantage from it. This has been your public service announcement uh, portion of the Glyos Recap. Until next month, everybody, which is only in a few days, so see you soon, I guess.